both Paul and Mike, Michael have said that there is no limiting principle here. Maybe there either is there one or does it not matter that there is one because this is within Congress's commerce power. <clears throat> the most important decision that the Supreme Court ever issued on the scope of federal power is called McCulloch versus Maryland. If you take McCulloch seriously, everything that Michael and Paul said is clearly wrong. Clearly. Here's what John Marshall says in McCulloch versus Maryland. And by the way, the argument is, oh, well, this creates a, this bank. It's a corporation, and that's special. Just like, oh, it's an individual mandate. And Marshall says, wrong, wrong, wrong. And he says it for reasons that are absolutely applicable here. Corporation, for example, Marshall says, it's already been created under other clauses of the Constitution. Why not here? We have actually had individual mandates. George Washington signed his name to an individual mandate. It's called the Militia Act of 1792. We had an individual mandate. I, I'll read you the language in, um, uh, before the end of, uh, of today. If you can have it for that, you can have it for the other thing. But here's what John Marshall says about the limiting principle. Oh, and by the way, can government tax me? Yes. Can it take that money and buy stuff with it? Yes. Can it once it bought, has bought something, can it give it to me? Yes. If it can do those three things as a matter of logic, why can't it say, buy it yourself, Amar? Cut the middleman out. And when he has, when either of them has a one sentence or one paragraph argument, counter argument, a basic logical point, then we can start to take this seriously. But they don't. And um, so um, government can tax me. And, and here's what John Marshall says about that. Um, and it's about the looming principle. McCulloch versus Maryland. The power of taxing the people and their property is essential to the very existence of government and may be legitimately exercised on the objects to which it is applicable to the utmost extent to which the government may choose to carry it. The only security against the abuse of this power is found in the structure of the government itself. In imposing a tax, the legislature acts upon its constituents. This is, in general, a sufficient security against erroneous and oppressive taxation. If you do not like this, vote the bums out. I personally don't much like um, many aspects of this law as a matter of policy. I personally would have preferred to see a lot of tort reform, malpractice reform of the thing. You know, my wife's a physician, and we've been sued in malpractice. My brother's a physician, and he's been sued. My mom's a physician, my dad's a physician. I don't like major portions of this as a matter of policy. And if you don't, vote them out. But we voted for President Obama and his party in the last presidential election. And they said they were going to do this. And that's what they did. And if you don't like it, then we're going to have another presidential election on this. The, the security, the limiting principle, is that they are taxing, in effect, us. They're, they're making us pay. Um, and if we don't like it, if we think we're not getting good deal, if, if they do a cash for clunkers, I don't think they will because there's no need for it. Um, and, and we don't need constitutional lawyers and judges pulling principles out of thin air to limit you know, the ability of Congress to um, uh, pass silly laws on ca cash for clunkers uh, requiring you to buy a car. Congress won't do it and hasn't done it because there isn't a, a need for it. But if they do do it, then I'd want to see why they did it. And there might be a reason for it, just as there was a reason to have a um, uh, an individual mandate um, in the Militia Act of 1792. Mike talked about conscription. Well, actually, the government can conscript you. You know, jury service is conscription. Militia duty is conscription. And let me just read you the language of a law that George Washington signed his name to, in which every citizen shall, within six months, provide himself with a good musket or firelock, a sufficient bayonet and belt, two spare flints, and a knapsack, a pouch with a box therein to contain not less than 24 cartridges, and on and on and on. 